Hi, welcome back to the Woodworking Shed. In today's video, we're going to be making this. Uh, this is a Longworth chuck, and it's for use for reversing a bowl or your piece onto to take the, uh, the tenon off when you finish turning it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take a couple of pieces of scrap plywood. Uh, this is 18 mil plywood. Um, what I've done is marked out a circle that is 14 inches. Now the reason for using 14 inches is that's the maximum that my lathe can cope with, 350 mil I think it actually works out to. So I've marked this ever so slightly oversized and I have marked uh, the centre point and what I need to do now is just drill a six mil hole into there so that I can use it with my circle cutting jig on the bandsaw. Because obviously this is too big to go on the lathe, I can't use the lathe to make it make it round. Holes drilled, and what I need to do now is, say, is cut it out on the bandsaw. But what I'm going to do first is take jigsaw and just rough cut it out. Not only will this make it easier to fit on the bandsaw, because I've only got a very small one, um, it also is less work for the bandsaw because it's not struggling or fighting up against these bigger sections. So let's get that cut out. <laughs> So I've got my circle cutting jig that I made on a previous video and I've put the locating pin to 14 inches. So I need to get this lined up now. I find this is easiest if I look right the way through the hole. It's really easy to locate. Okay, let's get it cut out. So I've cut both of these out now and I've bolted them together through the holes that were um, used for the, uh, on, the, on the bandsaw jig. What I've also done is I mounted them on the lathe and just trued them up a little bit. And I did that with the face plate. Now the face plate's on the other side or at least some holes for it are. The next bit's gonna get a little bit complicated. So, what we have here is all the markings for the slots. So, here is the outline of where the faceplate was. And you can see, or hopefully you can see anyway, the six holes and I have, this is the face plate that I'm using, so this is the one that came with my with my lathe um, and I'm going to sacrifice this for it and it will be permanently mounted to this. So set that to one side. <clears throat> so this green line here, or I've tried to colour it, um, hopefully you can see that, is represents where the face plate was. I've also drawn f four lines, dead straight lines, that go exactly through the centre and so see these two are at 90 degrees and these two are at 90 degrees and the whole thing is shifted around so that we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal sizes. And it's really important that those are lined up or that they are marked out accurately because all the other things will relate from those lines. So what I actually did was I actually marked this line as my number one line and everything was marked from that point. So hopefully everything will stay accurate. So having got that section there, the next thing I needed to do was draw another circle. And this is going to be the sort of inner side, okay? So you need to make sure you leave enough distance between the this hole and the face plate. I've gone for about half an inch. You then need to go to the outside edge and draw another circle and this time I've gone for about three quarters of an inch. So that's the, that's the two red lines here. The next two, which are these blue two, are a little bit more complex. So this blue line here is halfway between the two red lines. And this blue line is halfway between this blue line and this red line. Okay, so you have to draw all that out. Having then done that, then, using a compass, 
and again I'll find my first line which is the one that's got the number one on it you put the point in this position here and then you mark out when well, you measure the distance to here and that's where you draw your first radius and then you go around repeating all the way around and you end up with these black lines and these are the ones we need to route out i hope that that all makes sense if not um i there are there are other videos um there's a particular video that i used as a reference when i was creating this and i'll put a link to that in the description below <laughs> So now all the routing's finished, I took the opportunity to sand everything and I thought I'd give it a coat of blue paint as well, just to make it look a bit nicer. Um, so now we need to start assembling it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your two and you want to turn one over. Now this is the one that is going to be the one with the faceplate on it, still got the holes, so this is the one I'm going to turn over. Let's just put this one on the bottom first, yes, you'll see what I mean. And take this one, which is now the wrong way round. Hopefully, you'll better see. You better see that they're actually now the spirals go the other direction. So you need to line that up, and using your the bolt, you're going to poke that through there first, and through the second one. We should better go through the other side. Washer. Now this time I'm going to use a locking nut. Uh, because I don't want to do it up too tightly. Um, although I do actually need to make sure that that recess is in first. So I might just grab a normal nut just to pull it in. So yeah, you really want to use a, a locking nut because you don't want it to be done up tight. You need to be able to rotate it. Um, but obviously you don't want it coming undone either. So a locking nut is ideal for this. Right, let's just do this up first. Okay, so I've done that up so that the uh, the screw or the nut or the bolt, sorry, is just below the surface. Now I can undo it again. The screw should stay put, so it should just be a case of removing it and replacing it with a locking nut. keep testing it to make sure that you can still rotate it but there should be no horizontal play right so now I'm going to put the the face plate back on and if I do need to come back in and if I do need to come back in and do the do the bolt back up I can always get in there with a socket um, so it's not the end of the world it's not too right tightness straight away right now this is going to be really important to get it lined back up with where it was, looks about right. We might at some point want to put a couple of holes in here on the outside um, just to help rotate it when it's on the on the lathe, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to see if I can get on without it. Um, but if I do, I can always redraw those days later. So it's simple enough. Just use a forced a bit and just drill straight through. Uh, so now I need to put the uh, the holder, the holders in. Um, so I actually bought these off of eBay, and these are specifically for long with chucks. And these were they were only a few pounds. They weren't that expensive at all. Um, you can use various different things. Obviously, you're going to need bolts and washers and other bits and pieces. You could use rubber wine corks. Um, bits off of walking sticks, uh, there's all sorts of different things you could use, but I've gone with these because um, they do are actually a softer rubber, so they will compress that bit more. So let's just fit those. The first thing you're gonna have to do is obviously take the rubber 
end cap off. Take the wing nut off. And take the small washer, but not the big washer. You want to leave that on there. Now, I'm going to get sure it's all lined up. And poke it through the hole. Turn it over. Washer. Oops. And the wing nut. Yeah, I'm not sure I like those washers. I think they're a bit small. Um, they're probably absolutely fine, but I'm going to see if I've got something bigger. So I've got these huge grey washers here. Um, I didn't, I, I couldn't find anything else. It was kind of a bit in between, really. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to be too big or not. They, they might be a little bit too big, but I'm going to put them all on and we'll see. Um, if need be, I'll always change it. I'll put some, some different ones on. Um, might need, mean I need to pop out there. Okay, let's put that on. Okay, and just repeat and go around and do the rest of them. So as you can see, I've put the chuck onto the lathe. And I just very quickly just trued it up again. Um, although, I'm not entirely sure why. But and maybe something's out of balance somewhere. But when I what I have noticed is the two pieces, although they're both round, don't seem to be quite lined up. Um, it must be to do with this bolt. It it must not be completely dead central to the rest of it. But it still works. So the way the way that it works is when it's mounted, you make sure all these are all really loose, and then you hold the back one and you turn the front one. And as you can see, when you do that, these move in and out. So what you do is you get your piece, I'll just use a big blank, and then what happens, what you do is you just rotate that round until they start to grip. And then you just loosely, and I do mean very loosely at this point, do these up. You're just taking all the play out. Okay, so having done that, what you then want to do is make sure that your, that your, you know, your bowl, your plate, or whatever it is that you're trying to straighten, is in there securely. Now, because this is a blank, it's not, it's not true in the slightest. So it's just a great example. But you push it in, and then do one of them up a little bit tighter. Just nip it up, and you'll see that the, um, the rubber starts to compress. Now, what you don't want to then do is do that one, that one, that one, etc. What I would suggest is you do them in opposites, but opposites minus one. So if this is number one, then you want this one, okay? So you add on three, one, two, three. Do that up a little bit, one, two, three. Do that one up a little bit, one, two, three. And by doing that same method, you'll go around the whole thing doing them all up, but you'll be doing them opposite each other. And once you start to get them to compress, then you can just nip them up by going around because you've already held it in place. And then any that are a little bit looser than the others, just give them a little bit more attention. Okay, and there it is, it's in there. And that's not gonna come out. Now, one thing with these is bear in mind that this is just a few bits of rubber holding this. If I pull on that hard, it comes out. So bear that in mind. It's not as completely secured. So don't go spinning it up to 2,000 revs or anything and then start to you know, reshape the back of your bolt. The most that you want to use this is, is about 600. Um... 500 600 you don't really want to go any more than that because the chances of getting a catch and it pinging off and becoming really dangerous is a, is a real possibility so there we go there it is now i have already tried this out and i turned away the back of one of my bowls and i've recorded that for you and i'll show you that to you at the end um but that's it so i hope you've enjoyed this project and i hope you find it useful um 
go ahead and make one. Um, like I said, I got the inspiration from this watching another video. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, but yeah, let your imagination go wild. The basic principle is to be able to have these and have them so that when you turn this, they move in and out. Other than that, the world's your lobster. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you again soon.